Beef stew is a classic dinner staple, especially during those cold weather months. With this recipe, you're in for a treat. Whoa! You're going to love the meltingly tender beef and amazing smells. It's so good. The best thing about it is, everything is made in one pot. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the vegetables. I'm going to use a classic mirepoix, which is onions, celery, and carrots. It's going to add a ton of flavor dimension and aromatics to the dish. I have my carrots peeled, and I'm going to cut them into 3 quarter inch pieces. Cutting them into larger chunks is going to ensure that they don't break down while they braise in the oven. We need about two cups for the recipe. For the celery, we're going to cut them into half inch thick pieces. The smaller size is going to infuse a lot of flavor into the stew. We need about one cup of celery. Trim the top off of the red onion, and then just a little bit of the root end so that it stays intact and it's easier to cut. Cut it in half and peel off the skin. Cut the onion into one inch thick pieces. We need about a cup for the recipe. To make a hearty stew, I like to add some waxy potatoes like Yukon Gold into the recipe. I don't want them to break down while they're cooking in the oven, so I'm going to cut these into one inch size pieces. These are baby sized potatoes, so I'm just gonna cut them in half. These types of potatoes have more sugar instead of starch in them, so they're not gonna break down. Um, they're actually gonna hold their shape as they're cooking. For this recipe, I'm going to use beef chuck. It's very inexpensive, and it comes from the shoulder region of the cow. It's full of marbling and fat and connective tissues that's going to be very flavorful when we braise it. So I have about two and a half pounds of meat, but you could use up to three pounds, and we're going to cut them down into smaller pieces. You want to trim off any extra fat on the outside because it's just gonna make the stew really greasy. Okay, just cut these into smaller one and a half inch pieces. You can see there's big chunks of fat right there, so I'm just gonna trim that off. I'm going to season the beef with one teaspoon of kosher salt and a half teaspoon of black pepper. Just flip the meat over so you can season both sides. I had refrigerated my meat before I cut it, so it was really dry on the surface, but make sure if it's a little bit wet, use paper towels to dry it off because we want the beef to sear and not steam in the pan. Let's go head over to the stove. Set the oven rack to the lower third position. Heat to 350 degrees. Heat a large Dutch oven over medium high heat. Add three tablespoons olive oil. Once hot, add the beef in a single layer. Work in two batches. Sear each side until browned, about one to two minutes per side. Transfer to a clean plate and repeat with the remaining beef. The beef is done searing. It has a beautiful caramel colored crust and there's a ton of fond or brown bits stuck to the bottom of the pan that we're going to dissolve. That's gonna add a lot of flavor to the dish. Now in the same pot, we're gonna saute the vegetables and add the rest of the ingredients. Turn the heat down to medium and add two cups of carrots, one cup of celery, and one cup of onion. Saute until the onions are lightly browned and tender. Five minutes. Add one teaspoon chopped thyme and bay leaf. Saute for 30 seconds. Add one tablespoon minced garlic. Saute for 30 seconds. Wow, this smells amazing already. The onions are getting caramelized and the garlic and the thyme is really nice and herbaceous and adding a ton of aromatics. Now I'm going to add some balsamic vinegar to deglaze the pan, but it's also going to add this nice acidity and brightness and really boost the flavor of the ingredients. 
Add a quarter cup balsamic vinegar. Stir, scraping the bottom of the pan to release any browned bits. Cook until most of the liquid has evaporated, about one minute. Add one tablespoon tomato paste. Stir and cook for 30 seconds. Sprinkle in a quarter cup of flour. Stir and cook for one minute. Slowly stir in three cups of beef stock, scraping down the bottom of the pan. As a finishing touch to the beef stew, I'm gonna add some dry red wine. I like a full-bodied red wine like a Cabernet Sauvignon because it has really fruity flavors and nice balanced tannins, but you could also use a Merlot, a Chianti, or a French Beaujolais. But make sure you use one that you like to drink because you'll have a few glasses left over to enjoy with your meal. And if you don't want to add wine, you could also add grape juice instead or even pomegranate juice or you could just add an extra cup of beef stock if you don't want to add that at all. Add one cup of red wine and two tablespoons soy sauce. Stir to combine. Add the brown beef and one pound of sliced potatoes. Bring the liquid to a rapid simmer over medium high heat for five minutes. Turn off the heat. I've simmered the stew just for a few minutes to get the starches in the flour to start thickening and to keep that liquid nice and hot before we add it to the oven. The oven is going to give a nice consistent amount of heat, cooking the stew by conduction, and it allows you to not have to touch it at all. We're just going to put the cover on and you're going to bake it for about 75 to 90 minutes or until the meat is super fork tender and the vegetables can be easily pierced with a knife. You can also cook the stew on the stovetop, but there's going to be little pockets of heat that build up, so make sure to stir it about every 20 minutes or so. Wow, this looks incredible. The meat oh, is fork tender, all the vegetables are ready. And if you want a thicker sauce, you could turn the heat up to medium high and concentrate it for a few more minutes until you get the desired consistency. But this looks good to me. It's ready to serve. Okay, let's take a peek. Wow, the meat and vegetables are glazed with the sauce. Woo! It smells amazing. Okay, right before serving, I like to garnish with a little bit more freshly cracked black pepper and some chopped parsley. You can grab some serving bowls and just enjoy it as is, or if you want a heartier meal, I would definitely serve it with my homemade mashed potatoes right here. I hope you enjoyed learning the science behind beef stew, and if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. It means a lot when you do. See you in the next video. Oh. It's time to eat. <laughs>